super grainy. Everything's so grainy. Stop recording. Pause for sure. I don't. Okay, there it is. Now it's recording. I don't know where the fuck it saves. I <laughs> whatever. Um, do you want to do a test so you you can make sure that it saves? I'm sure it is. I mean, it says recording. Right. So I, I'm gonna just trust it that it is. And sounds good. Uh, man, I, like seriously, I I've been wanting to start up this podcast again probably for like the last year and a half after I like became kind of like a solid admin. Uh-huh. And then I was like, I just haven't had the time. And then suddenly I had a shit ton of time. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> suddenly, oh my goodness. It's funny because I still remember the podcast that we did with, uh, with Yolanda. Hell yeah. Um, and that's funny because it was pretty much at the beginning of Trump's presidency. And I distinctly <laughs> remember some of the things that I said. So it'll be cool to like kind of come back to it today. Oh, yeah. Uh, you do remember. What, what do you remember saying? Well, specifically for me, I remember telling you guys that like he's the president. So we need to at least give him a shot you know and i think in these four years we've given him that shot so i think some (laughs) some people have yes but at the same time it's like we've given him a try and it seems like he keeps failing over and over again in my opinion you know so essentially your response is pretty much what Chappelle's response was was like hey i know on snl i said give him a chance but uh (laughs) what <laughs> exactly that's exactly it yeah totally man and it's funny how Chappelle has just mirrored what a lot of people think and it's nice that he's able to put it out for people to digest I, I loved his stand-ups man and this past one was great oh that you you watched that was the 8 846 yeah man that was such a great powerful it wasn't even like stand-up he was just kind of talking and yeah. you know giving his perspective and well I, what I appreciate was like I was trying to explain so like what I, what I like about my admin team is like, at least I'm like kind of the psycho liberal <laughs> <laughs> and my principal is like pretty hardcore conservative. Wow. Um, but like, he's not, I mean, again, it's not like, I, I would say he's more like, just like, he's not very like socially conservative. He doesn't really care about any of that stuff. He's just like, yeah, as long as you're living your life and you're not hurting anybody, why would I care? exactly Uh, you know he's more like fiscally conservative so we kind of get into like discussions and talks sometimes and he's like Mm kind of on the down roll about it because he doesn't like one he thinks like oh you know like you don't want that attention in education which i agree (laughs) like like definitely but uh too much too high of a population there's too much of a chance that we're gonna you know upset someone exactly um but i think like one of the things i was trying to explain to him was kind of like man like because, you know, he had very much the conservative response. He's like, you know, I, like I, he's like, I totally respect the protests. They all make sense to me. He's like, I don't understand the riots. And I was trying to explain, like, man, like, like yes, some of it is, like, like oh, if you want to call them bad actors, but, like, some of it's bad actors. I was like, some of it, I'm like, in my opinion, is, like, just based on the history of the United States, probably government actors. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, the government actors pretty heavily out there i was like but then some of it is just like anger in general that's been like, boiling over you yeah. know over the past 200 years two and yeah. 400 years you know so it's interesting because i was kind of thinking similarly um in that uh we're in a unique position as history teachers or you're a past history teacher right to kind of know that this sort of stuff has been happening over and over and over again you know the haves are not willing to give the the have-nots and the have-nots get upset and have revolution and then it happens over again you know so or (laughs) they're brutally put down (laughs) exactly and that's Uh, where we're at a lot more american history or u.s Uh history (laughs) exactly Uh, i was like i was it like a week ago i was finally like i mean just everything's been boiling and i just like i'm like screw this i need to just sit down and like just need to start typing my thoughts out and it was uh you know, I'm like, I'm not necessarily going to share this with anyone, but I just need to organize my own thinking around like what, what in the God is happening. Um, you know, and uh, part of it was just like, like you were saying, it's like looking at the history. It's like so many of my like friends and I've got like friends and family who are conservative and you know, that's, I'm sure you have the same. <laughs> I mean, we all do, right? Like, You're like just- a conservative in a Latino family. What? <laughs> Seriously. But um, but it's one of those things where I'm just like, 
you guys don't understand the history. Like, they're like, well, why haven't they improved their own communities? I'm like, they tried. <laughs> they tried so many times. I was like, but, you know, let's just work backwards. I was like, you got three strikes. Then you, before, before that, you have crack. <laughs> before that, you have killing their civil rights leaders. Before yep. that, you have, you Black know. Wall Street, you know, yeah. Tulsa Massacre. Yeah. Like, dude, it's just, it, what people need to understand is it's not an even race. That's, yeah. that's what we really need to understand. We're like, people, certain people are starting here and certain people are starting here. And you're expecting them to reach you in the same amount of time, you yeah. know, and it's just not going to be possible. And I think that's what people need to start realizing, you know. Yeah. that not everyone has the same privileges and it's not even that overt. And that's what we've been trying to get people to understand over these past 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And it just seems like now it's finally boiling over because it's hitting mainstream. And it took someone dying horrifically to get to that point. And I just hope that it continues, you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. I mean, you know, I see it slowing a little bit from like, the pure burst of rage and probably slowly consolidating more into like, I hope more of a movement thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the thing for me that I'm, I'm hoping is that they really do. I don't know. Like my opinion has always been, and maybe again, like I'm, you know, I'm mixed race, half white, you know, half Vietnamese That's right. dealing with all that fun stuff growing up and, you know, not being part of obviously the black experience either. But mm -hmm. um, like for me, it's always been, and again, this is probably the history part is like way more of a class thing than it has ever been like a skin color thing. I was like, and I, I mean, a lot of the people that I, like, especially some of like the white friends who are like, well, like, what about this? And what about that? And like, why can't they just do it? I'm like, no, but you don't understand. Like, they're like, well, you know, the police kill white people too. I was like, yeah. I was like, and that's why police reform would be good. <laughs> like, <laughs> to keep them from doing happen. this. We've militarized them, man. Yeah. Like, what other country is going to do this? It's crazy. Well, China. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that, dude, but look at China. It's, yeah. it's a fascism. It's like you can't, you can't compare. We're supposed to be the land of the free, and people are, real, are starting to realize that that's not necessarily true for a large portion of this country. Well, so many people. Like what, and, and honestly, the biggest factor, again, I think, is more wealth. Mm -hmm. As, you know. I, I mean, I understand even in wealth, there's going to be disparity too. And that's probably, I was like, I feel like r racism is a way more of like a key in how you are approached when you're wealthy than it mm -hmm. is when you're poor. Because like when you're poor, everyone just approaches you suspiciously. <laughs> yep. Like one of my really good friends, he grew up in like a rural area. And like, he always tells me about how like the cops would just come and do checks at his house. And wow. you know, he's white, like, like whiter than me. <laughs> like why? Why does, why does this rolling thing? <laughs> I like legitimately, like, you know, and you know, his, I think his, one of his brothers was killed by cops and, you know, it, like all this stuff. Wow. And so it's like, he's like, I understand what they're saying, but like, where was my privilege growing up? And I'm True. like, I mean like that, you know, that is understandable. And like, you know, he understands, I think also in the, the effect of like, he could, pretend to be something else and then become that other thing away from that which if you grow up poor and black you may not have that opportunity yeah um or, and, and, you know. and that's it like we forget like we're not trying to invalidate people's hurt or pain right like everyone goes through shit and and, and life is not easy right <laughs> for anyone i mean the easy for some people who are running to it, but the point is is that Black people in America have had a history of being oppressed since slavery. That's something that white people will never, ever understand, you know, and that just continues to pass from generation to generation to generation. But that pain is still there, you know, and that hurt is still there. And, and it's continued and it's just, it's, it's a cycle, you know. And, and like I said, we're not trying to invalidate their, their pain, but it's just the fact of the matter that their pain has been so long and so ingrained in this country. And I think it's time that people start realizing it, you know? No, I agree. I mean, that's, you know, I, I, I mean, I feel like that's like the story of America is like undealt with pain, <laughs> like not only for black, but like for all people, just like everyone, whether it's like a veteran <laughs> where we're just mm -hmm. like, Hey, you're in pain 
anyway, uh, I guess you just want benefits. And like, <laughs> right? Like, that's not like, even willing to help the mind, you know? Yeah. And that's what we need to do. Yeah. We need to start reforming the way that we deal with people who break the law. Yeah. Instead of just shutting them away or, you know, just to shut them up, we have to really start focusing on rehabilitation. Which is why I think this whole defund the police movement needs to be, you know, shown to the public in a different way. It's not necessarily completely defunding them, right? If you call 911, you're going to be able to call and find someone who's going to help you. But the point is, is we need to start diverting funds to things that will actually help to rehabilitate people and allow them to become members of society again, you know, to be able to vote and have, like participate in democracy. No, I agree. I mean, I think part of the whole police thing really should be, it's like they need to be modeled after, you know, one of the other effective agencies that are also public agencies. Like, uh, like for example, firefighters, they have like a general services. Every, every neighborhood has a general services firefighting, but then they have like areas that share or depending on the size of the city, just like one station that's like, this is the like, the high ladder station or this is like mm-hmm. like the like the building just <laughs> toppled building thing and it's like i feel like for cops like i mean the fact that so many like departments have swats is scary but should there be a swat i think there are definitely we could argue that there absolutely are situations where well, there, absolutely i agree with you 100 percent. but it should be like a shared responsibility they shouldn't be an everyday thing it should be like all right like san jose mountain View, you know like that sort of thing where it's like okay when we need it we can call out to them we actually Mm -hmm. don't want them to work we're going to pay you fully we're going to pay you hazard pay when it comes to it but we actually don't want you working we really just want you training and then when we need you we're going to call you whereas like for all the other cops it should just be like hey your job is just to be in the neighborhood like get out there get to know the people in the neighborhood like walk the beat like you know do that sort of thing but um, I mean, I mean, again, you mentioned it earlier too, which is like we're we're blaming the cops for a lot of stuff, but it's like they didn't come up with the system that they're enforcing. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> like, as far as far as I know, cops. I mean, their unions can get laws passed, but like most of the time, they're getting called by, you know, those those well off folks saying like, "Hey, this is this is what's happened in this neighborhood." Exactly. And they start terrorizing that. But you made an interesting point about community, right? And I think that's going to be an important part moving forward. This thing about positive community building. Now, the the difficult part is that there's already like a bias in the people, especially in minority people that view cops a certain way. So even if they wanted to become part of the community, the community itself in its current state is going to start shunning it, you know? So there needs to be an understanding from both sides. How that happens, it's, it, that's the question, right? How are we going to get one side to start trusting the other side and vice versa? Well, I mean, and it's tough. The left kind of like mocking it when it does happen. though. Mm-hmm. It's like, I mean, there, there are the videos around, going around of like the Flint PD saying like, hey, we're part of your community. We're going to put our stuff down. We're going to march with you. That wasn't right. We, you know, and then like people are like, oh, look at this performance. Look at it's like, listen, you're not part of this community. <laughs> I mean, that's the other part too. It's like, you do have a lot of vocal people from like other areas where it's like, yeah, your area is screwed, mm-hmm. but like, don't judge like yours versus like this community. You don't live here. It's doing it. Right. Yeah. I think I saw some report on uh, some place in New Jersey where they like disbanded all their police and then like rehired and focused on just, community and they're like our crime rate went down like 500 <laughs> percent like I, re- I read that too. number yeah and i'm just like okay like so that tells me that broken window policing doesn't work and community-based policing does exactly it's like, hey and it's a small sample size but we need to start having other cities doing that to see what happens yeah you know i mean because what you don't want on the other end is like and i hate to say it but it's like you don't want chaz like, I don't want jazz. I'm sorry. Like, I, if you're like, hey, this area is free of police, I'm going to be like, you know what? Like, sometimes I want to be able to call a cop. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that I'm not prepared to handle. 
but you want to be able to call and have them do their job and not constantly like, you know, there, there are some black people or other people, minorities who don't want to call the police because yep. when they get there, just immediately go to them and think they're a suspect, you know, they don't trust them. So that, like I said, we have somehow bridge that gap and yeah. it's going to definitely it's different. I mean, I think that's where we really do have to enforce like it, like you, and I mean, this is something we've talked about in education before too, which is like, you do need to be a part of the community. Like mm-hmm. if you're not from where you're teaching or you're not from where you're policing, then you're just like, dude, this is just my job. I don't care. But if like you're there, like, especially you, you're like, I grew up here. <laughs> this is my school. This is exactly. Like, I want you to do better. Like, because that means my community is doing better. Absolutely. But actually, that does bring me to, like, the actual thing I want to talk with you about. Because I want to get your opinion. Because, like, my thought was, is, like, I think it's ironic that, like, so much is focused on, like, cops and the system there. Mm-hmm. When, like, in my personal opinion, oh, dude, education is just as culpable. <laughs> oh, I agree. I 100% agree. And it's funny because cops and teachers are in a very similar spot, in my opinion. They don't have as much funding as they probably could have. Their training is meant for so much. Like they have to do so much in the outside. Teachers have to do so much in the classroom, not just teach, right? And it's just a system that's built to fail, in my opinion, (laughs) you know? Like if we really cared about education, class sizes would not be as big as they are. Bottom line, Yeah. right? If we really cared about education, if you want to look at the stats and see how important it is to have a small class size for, for developing children, like we have completely been a part of it. I, I agree. You know, it, it's tough because we're not doing what I think we should be doing. No, that's right. I mean, that's the funny thing is like, I see a lot of teachers saying like, you know, because teachers, you're always, you're always going to react to the person above you. So I, mm-hmm. like, I definitely like on Twitter and on Instagram, like I follow a lot of like uh, hip hop ed and, you know, they've got a lot of progressive teachers posting about like, like screw my admin. They're trying to do this, this and this. And I'm like, I was like, honestly, admin are just the middlemen. I was like, yeah, sometimes you get that, you know, admin do have a lot of say sometimes, but when it comes to like class size, when it comes to like, hey, we're opening up the school, but we don't have safety equipment, like that's not the admin. Like I can't, <laughs> I can't go against my district. If my district was like, you're not opening a school until you have safety equipment, then we're not opening until there's safety equipment. But mm-hmm. the district is like, your school's opening, whether you're prepared or not. And, and like, that's the weird part, right? Because we are getting all these, you know, CDC recommendations on what is necessary to open back up, yet we're not seeing any increase in funding to make that happen. No. So once again, we're meant to be doing more with less. Yeah. And that is the that is the that's the thing about education, right? Having to do more with less. Yeah. And it just seems like we have less and less as the years go on. And we're expected to do more and more. And it's just getting scarier, especially with the, you know, the, with, with COVID. Yeah. This fall is going to really expose a lot. It's going to really expose a lot. Teachers are not going to be prepared fully for this as much as, you know, districts want to say that they are, there's a large portion of teachers who really don't know how to use these technologies as well as other teachers, you know? So they're going to find they're going to be forced into a situation that they weren't trained for. It's tough. And yeah, not everyone's you and uh, and Lauren. <laughs> doing or, or even just you know, tech savvy. You know, yeah. I'm the I have a privilege of like being younger right now, so I grew up with the with the technology. But there are teachers, great teachers, who didn't grow up with this, so they're yeah. learning it on the spot. I can't imagine how difficult that is. You know, I mean the the other part too is just, I mean again, it, it's not a system meant to genuinely grow in my folks either teachers or again like you keep hammering the teachers so they're stressed out and maxed out and then you just you know blame them just like you keep hammering the cops about like oh like why aren't crime numbers going down and then they're Mm -hmm. stressed out and then they're trying to do their stuff they work three triples because Mm -hmm. there's not enough money for other folks you know it's just one of those things where i'm like you know like, I know some folks who've gotten out of education, they're like, I can't be a part of that system anymore. And, and like, that's the thing, dude. Like, 
it's about what this country values. What do yeah. we value? You know, do we really value education and do we really value, you know, enforcement? At the end of the day, what this country unfortunately really values is, is like the stock market. Are yeah. people getting more money in their hands and are they not? You know, it, it doesn't it doesn't give them a good return to put money in education because the more that people are educated, the more people will see through all the things that are happening in this country and the more people will want change, yeah. you know. There's a reason why they don't really care at the end of the day while allowing the people who have means to get the education that they need and want. You know, it's not fair. Well, it, it, it's another situation of the haves and have nots. And that's, and that's America, unfortunately. It, it you know? really, well, I mean, it also, I mean, it goes to show, I mean, and, and a lot of it is like, I would say it's like the haves taking advantage of the have nots when they're making one of their pushes. Cause mm -hmm. like, um, you know, one of the things, I was talking about with someone was, uh, you know, we were just talking about like, why, why are, why are these the standards that we're expected to teach kids? <laughs> like, why are they expected to graduate from high school with these? Like, why are, why are all kids expected to go to college? And I was like, well, I was like, you know what? Like it started from a good place, at least from educators and, mm -hmm. and progressive groups was because like back in the day, like you had brown and black kids who wanted to go to college and they were told they couldn't. And so, you know, they fought in court and then, then it went to the other side, which is like, all right, now everybody's got to go to college. And so then you have like the college industry now and this loan industry and like, it's a new business. Yeah, exactly. You know, so then you have like money. To take advantage of it. Exactly. And so you have to play, like, it's crazy. You yeah. know, we're told growing up that we have to play into this system in order to have the life that we want, the dreams that we want, you know, but at the end of the day, we're just giving them money, man. Like it's, it, it's, it's a cycle. Yeah. It's a cycle. Well, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, when we got rid of everything that I was like, I'm sorry, like people love cars. Like, they <laughs> love them. I was like, they got rid of like auto shop in so many places. They're having to bring it back. I was like, but I mean, I mean, I'm sure this, this is for my school, Graham. And I'm sure it's for Davis too. It was like, if you guys had like an auto or a wood shop you would have a huge number of kids who were just like, yeah, I love this. I love working with my hands. And they're like, oh, look, at this is how you apply that math you're learning. They would, they'd be like, yes. But it's funny that, that and, and that's the issue too. It yeah. goes back to money and funding. It's like, dude, we had a wood shop class. We had like art classes, multiple art classes, you know, okay. now like going into next year, we're not going to have an art class. What? Every single, yeah, we're not going to have an art class. Uh, our art teacher, I, I don't, I don't know if I should say, but she's retiring. Okay. And because of COVID and the budget problems that um, arise from that, they're not going to replace that position, that elective, which, which is crazy. You know, we just keep losing more and more electives, more and more opportunities for kids to figure out things that they want. That's not the core that yeah. the the country wants you to know. And yeah, it sucks you, because you'll find funds for like some like math support or in your yeah, support class. You know, some remedial class too, you exactly. know, unfortunately. And we're not able to give the students who are achieving an opportunity to expand their mind in that way. So then well, teachers are forced to do it in the they don't need another remedial class. They need a class exactly. to engage them. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And and like you this is where you need to look at other countries too. And not to bring it back to like oh tracking. But I think you should have an opportunity to see what are some, you know, trade jobs that you can do. Yeah. Start you at a younger age, because like, like you said, like we're, we're all told that we need to go to college, but we need to start telling people that it's okay to not go to college. If you are able to, to learn a certain trade that the world needs. Right. And if we start doing that at school, maybe less people will be in poverty. And I think that's kind of where you're going at. Right. We're just as culpable. We're not allowing kids to, to have the opportunity to be able to make, you know, a life for themselves but, as I mean, much as, as we want. And this is the weird part of it, though. And this is the thing I also have to explain to people. I was like, schools and teachers don't actually really get to decide what, you know, we have some like minor leeway, but we don't actually control the curriculum. Like when parents are like, oh, like Common Core standards this and Common Core standards that. I'm like, but that's not teachers. Like, I mean, yeah, some teachers are like super gung-ho behind it and some were like, uh, 
whatever, or like some are like, oh, this is awful. I was like, but you realize all of this is legislated. Yes. You guys vote for this. You guys are the ones who say that like every student must go to college now and these are the A through G requirements. You guys are the ones who voted algebra as a requirement to graduate from high school. Like, Mm -hmm. and people, you know, I saw some like, because I'm always curious. I'm like, okay, like what are people saying about like how necessary is algebra in life? Mm -hmm. And then there are reasons where the... Just the dumbest reasons I've ever seen. Like one was like, "Were you ever a child throwing a ball? Guess what? You used algebra." <laughs> what the hell are you talking? I'd about? argue it's more physics, but yeah, yeah I, I guess it was like say algebra. physics or calculus. <laughs> like, but at the same time, I'm also like, "But that's not what the actual question is. Like, when will I need to know those formulas in order to do this?" Now, mm-hmm. if you're like, "Well, it's a way of thinking." Well, you could get me to do mathematical thinking and logic and that's useful Mm -hmm. without like forcing everyone to do algebra which is hard to understand exactly for quite a few people we could emphasize more geometry and statistics and i really wish people understood statistics right now (laughs) oh dude or the fact that so many people so many statistics out there are faked you know just to get people to sway a certain way that's why i don't trust polls no you know Dude, even in 2016, all these polls that we saw right before the election, oh, you know, Hillary's going to handily beat Trump, but it's no no contest, all that stuff. And look what ended up happening. So even like this year when I start seeing, you know, Biden in the lead or, you know, whoever candidate is in whatever election, I never trust that, you know? And that's what people need to start realizing too. We have to start voting, 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 voting. But to get back to, to what we were talking about, what specifically were you talking about right right now? Just like how as much as people like to think like teachers and admin and school districts decide on standards, it's actually legislated by the people. Yes. And and the way I see it's like teachers are really just decipherers of mandates, right? We're mandated by our state to teach this certain thing. And it's our job to just decipher it and make it engaging. That's, that's literally all of our job. We're not telling you, Oh yeah, all of a sudden, all this and all, we have to frame it within our, within our bars (laughs) you know i mean the irony is that's that's where admin i mean i will say that has been the one thing as like an admin that has been very nice is that the ability to go into a classroom and just tell the teacher like no like you need to teach what you actually think is right to teach like we can like you know i was an english major man you want me to build a BS argument about what you're teaching and how it applies to standards, we can do that. (laughs) I'm like, but, you know, realize I'm your evaluator. And if I feel what you're doing is right for kids and right for their future, then you've got that leeway. And, you know, unfortunately there are a lot of admin out there who are worried about it. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, you know, we've had, we've shared some. (laughs) in our Absolutely. But the thing I I loved about your teaching, uh, Alberts is, is the fact that you went beyond that you started to get into the self, you know, and that's what students at that age need. And I, I think that's what we need to start incorporating, you know, like learning about yourself before you could even learn about all this other stuff, you know? And, and I think that was very important. I still incorporate into my classroom to this day. So it's important, you know? Well, I mean, it's important. The important part of it too, is just like the modeling aspect, which is like, I would never ask like, a first or second year teacher to do like the crazy stuff that I did. But I'm like, just, you know, I, <laughs> I told folks like, and, and I actually did model this, this last year for a uh, second year or she and her. Yeah. She was in her second year teaching this year. Um, and, and, you know, she was just like, I, you know, I'm having trouble with the class. I was like, listen, this is what I used to do with the class. I used to just have them tell me everything that was wrong and just have those big discussions. I was like, but again, like you have to be like really secure in who you are as a person. And then you have to be able to take feedback. But like my thing has has always been, it's like, dude, as a teacher, you're literally judging these kids every day for a Mm -hmm. year. I was like, and you can't take one day a month where you're like, okay, now it's your turn to judge me. I was like, that's. Absolutely. Then how are they supposed to take feedback? Like, Like, you know, you have to model how to take feedback. 
And like, that was always my thing. It's like, you know, kids would say like, you're boring. You're boring. This class is boring. I'm like, okay, so what does that mean? Yeah. I'm going to ask you questions. So for me to grow, I can't work with it's boring, but I can work with is confusing or it doesn't have to do with anything or you talk too much. Like those (laughs) things I can work on. I was like, but you know, and so that's what I wanted them to take forth, which is like, when you get feedback from a teacher, that's like, this is confusing. You're like, why is it confusing? Yeah. What's confusing about it? Oh, well, you don't have enough examples. Okay. I can find more examples. Or yeah, that, exactly. But, and that's the mark of a good teacher to be able to constantly mold and change yourself. You know, like when me specifically, I would have my kids do a survey like every month or every few weeks oh, just to get, get a gauge of like, how are you guys doing? What can I do better? What are you enjoying? What are you not enjoying? And then that kind of informs me for the rest of the year. Oh, this specific group doesn't like these sorts of assignments, but they really like these. Yeah. I'm going to start incorporating more of that, you know? So it, it's about also getting to know, obviously, your, your class. But like, look, if we want more of that, we have to incentivize teaching, yeah. you know? I, I love being a teacher. It's great. You know, the, the interactions we get with our students are some of the best things that I've felt as a person. And it's great. Absolutely. But it does not necessarily feel that my country values my profession yeah. as much as I think it should, you know? And if you want more people that genuinely want to teach, you have to incentivize it. And unfortunately, like we've been talking about, there's no benefit in those haves, eyes of having more educated people. It just, that's, that's the reality and it sucks, you know, cause we have to work through that regardless. Cause we're aware that the system is there. Yeah. We're aware that it's, it's bounded us into a certain area and we're aware that we have to do whatever it takes to get the kids to try and see that but move past it and help them along the way but it's tough man it (laughs) really is tough it's so tough because no matter how hard we try there's always going to be a few kids that we just cannot reach for whatever reason and that's tough that's really tough yeah but again and you know and this i mean this is where we're we're talking about is like cops and teachers like are very close together in that which is like again like you got like weird incentives for cops like (laughs) weird weird like the the incentives to break the law for cops Mm -hmm. where it's like oh they oh i found a thousand dollars cash on you yeah i'm gonna just take it yeah thank you or you know oh like i could have talked this guy down but i wasn't sure what was going on so i shot him and he's dead and now I'm a quit like there's not even trial it's like okay you know crazy well, man like yeah. so it's just like I mean again it's like I think te- I, honestly I think teachers and cops are both incentivized to be worse shitty yeah yeah I mean you really are it's like if you're the teacher that like leaves right at the bell like doesn't go beyond just does all the assignments meets all the expectations of like, okay, I've got a learning objective on the board, you know, Mm -hmm. I, you know, the kids does what you need and nothing more organized. Like you do last longer in education because one, you don't get to know the kids and their trauma, Uh (laughs) which is one of the hardest. You don't get frustrated when there's like, Oh, like a change because you're like, okay, I'll just change that one process. Like Mm -hmm. you don't, you don't question anything you're like okay like you're gonna be what part of whatever specific committee and you'll do the least you can you're gonna make your way to your 30 30 years you'll probably be that like 70 year old teacher who like should have retired but is staying to get that extra money and yeah. <laughs> pension yeah man totally and i mean like i said cops get the same thing which is like dude uh, you know it's better to shoot first and ask questions later because you'll be alive at the end of the day to get your pension and that's so, what they're trained. i agree i agree and it sucks because what do you think the root of that is well i mean <laughs> like I think, we, I think we've talked about that which is again it's like well if like if it's easier to have these folks as like oppressors than it is to have like genuine like helpers mm-hmm. like you can keep that community in check you can Absolutely. keep people fighting against each other. Mm-hmm. Like if I, as a middle class person now, like have concerns about like, oh, I see this suspicious person outside, and maybe it's like just some person going door to door trying to sell stuff, trying to make a living. Like, oh, I think they're stealing packages, and I call the cops on them, and then they get shot. 
you know, like, that's because I'm trying to, like, keep mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want them taking my stuff. You know, mm -hmm. they're just trying to do the right thing. And then, again, same with teachers, which is, like, I, I distinctly remember after my second year teaching when I got, in, like, I got into all that stuff with Franklin McKinley, you know, like, the parents had asked me questions. They were just like, hey, like, isn't the superintendent lying to us? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said one thing, and now he's giving you another, and he's saying he never said the other thing. Mm -hmm. I was here when he said that first thing. And so, yes, he's lying to you. And so those parents, you know, not really understanding how the system works, they go to the superintendent, and they're like, Mr. Albert said this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, okay, he's wow. out. <laughs> and so really, that's yeah, what happened. That was, I was a very like, again, I was very like a proactive person. So like, when I saw stuff that I disagreed with, I definitely called it out or I questioned it. Okay. Um, you know, we happened to be part of like a school that they were just creating. And so that just, I mean, that was just like, no one pulled me aside, you know, like after, <laughs> after that, when I got to Mountain View Wisman, I had, a, you know, some teachers pull me aside and be like, listen, like you need to calm down and become tenured first and then you can raise And then, people. yeah. But like until you're tenured, like don't be a union person, don't do any of that. And like my first year. You gave me the same advice. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I said, I mean, like, I mean, because I learned it the hard way. Yeah, you did. And I'd never even thought to make that connection. That's crazy. Yeah. You went through yeah. that. It was fun. But like, I mean, I love my, <laughs> the kids, my first two years of teaching, like I absolutely like, like I had, like I love them. I would, I was definitely ride or die for them. And then, I feel like you remember your first few years more than the others, to be honest. Well, I, for me, I know exactly what it was, which is like, I like leaving them hurt so bad that I kind of like shut down and it was like, I hate to say that, but I came, became like, I went to Mountain View Wisman and for those first two years there, I was definitely that kind of like that robot teacher of like, all right, mm -hmm. I'm doing this. Like I was still friendly and fun with the kids, but like, I didn't know as much about what was going on in their lives. I was kind of mm -hmm. like, okay, like, yeah, this was happening, whatever. Um, but it couldn't stay that way. Like I got tenured and then like I started, you know, getting a little bit more involved. And then by my like year four there, um, on my way out the door, kind of burned that bridge real well. Uh, by calling them all racist <laughs> at a staff meeting. <laughs> what but, prompted well, that? I'm curious. That's well, crazy. So what happened was um, they were doing this thing. They had a six period day there. Um, and they had just decided as like a school site to move to a seven period day. And the way they sold it was all these kids who have support classes, now they have the chance to get an elective. And I was like, that's dope. I was like, if we're doing that, like, hell yes, I'm behind this. Like, this is awesome. This is going to work great. And they had the way their schedule works is they had like, you know, standard days. And then I think Wednesday and Thursday were block days. So mm -hmm. it was like workout. These kids would have like straight up, like interesting elective that they would get to choose just like something to actually engage them. Sure. And then maybe in like April or May at one of the staff meetings, it started to come out that like, no, these kids actually are going to pretty much all these kids in EL, like ELD, English language development. Um, we're going to give them an extra math support class because they really need it. And then, so then all these other kids, the affluent kids, they get banned. Oh, and no. Spanish. Or like, you know, they get choir and like computer tech. Like, I know it's just like. Then you got to think about what's driving that, right? And that's test scores. Right? Well, they want to look good to make sure that the community thinks everything is going well. But in reality, you're just putting kids down. Yeah. You're not allowing them to really enjoy school. Well, that's was, crazy, like, dude. I was I like, can't oh, that that me so like literally it was like last staff meeting I had taken, like they had this journal. They're like, let's record our memories in this, blah, blah, blah. So I, I wrote all this stuff down. And at the last staff meeting, I was like, because at that point, Vern, uh, did you ever meet Vern? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was the VP when I first started at Davis. <laughs> yeah. So Vern had already hired, like, he'd already said, like, hey, apply to Davis, get a job here. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, so I had already gotten a job there. And I was like, 
I have to say this. I, I can't, I can't sit on my, my, my tongue. I can't sit on my hands. I was like, you guys are doing, I, I can only call it racist and that like, but it honestly, it wasn't even racist. It's just like, you guys are doing a disservice to all these poor kids who are struggling and like, they just need something interesting to grab them. And you are taking that away from them again. Mm-hmm. Like, and I can't believe this staff is okay with this, let alone the admin here. And so then kind of everyone was like, whoa, 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 whoa. and I was like, peace the fuck out, motherfuckers. Yeah, seriously. And that's bullshit. Um, that is bullshit, man. Yeah. And then I got to Davis and already at that point, I was already like, like, I, I, I don't want that to happen again. And then, <laughs> you know, I was, I think Vern put it in my head, like, Hey, you should try to think about getting your admin credential. I'm like, all right, fine. So then <laughs> and my wife was already getting hers. So the year after she got her certificate, I got mine. And then the rest is history applied to Morel. And like, it's been nice being able to be like, like there's teachers at Morel that were like, when I first came in, everyone was like, that teacher's like a bitch or like this teacher's an asshole, you know, like the typical stuff, like, Hey, what? Yeah, every you? step. <laughs> and like, literally this last year, like one of our teachers stepped up and like such, like she's been teaching for a long time. Um, and she's been like having a hard time with it. But like this year, and like, this is three years of me just like her and I just having conversations all the time. And then when it, there was a principal opening at my school, like me pulling in someone who I thought would, like, I actually like kind of headhunted my principal and was like, you should apply. Cause oh, wow. I think what you have, even, you know, conservatism be damned. But uh, he's just like an open and honest person. And I was like, I think that's what the school needs. And so pulled him in. And then so like all last year and then this year. And this year, man, this is like a 20 year veteran. And she's just like, I just want to let you know that I took my plan book. And I pretty much threw it away. And I'm starting over from scratch. And I'm going to be experimenting with stuff. Is it okay if we come in and I just talk with you? I don't think it's all going to work. And he and I were like, hell yes. Can you get like a thousand more of you? I mean, she like, she started off the year kind of having like relationship issues with like one of the students. And then like, by the end of the year, she's like, can I have, cause she's a multiple subject teacher and does like history English. He's like, can I have my history class with her too? So he moves into her history class and is like getting the A's now. We're like, what the hell is happening? Like, this is amazing. And so it's just like, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, there are a lot of teachers out there who want to do what's right. Mm-hmm. But they've been burned so many damn times that they're just like scared and they're just trying to keep their heads down. But when they get that environment, and that's the thing that I was saying, it's like as an admin, it's been nice with like, I can make that environment for teachers where I'm just like, as long as you can come to me and say, you're doing the best for kids and I can see that it's actually the best for kids and you can prove that to me, I got your back and don't worry. Um, and so even we, just having that conversation, that helps so much, you know, yeah. I'm sure you deliberately had that conversation because oh, yeah. that. we had that conversation. And the other thing we, I mean, the other policy that I think is like should be one that every leader has, which is like teachers need that time to blow steam, but not just with other teachers. They need to feel like they're being heard. And so like our thing is, is like, if you are having a rough time or like, I mean, you could come in to my office and you could swear for like 50 minutes about one student. I don't care. Like you can be like, you know, angel is a devil. <laughs> He's a devil, like, you know? Every teacher has a few kids. Exactly. You know? I was like, but it's like, I don't need to write a book for a conversation you have with me as long as you don't take that back into the classroom. Of course, yeah. Um, and I think that's also been like a huge thing for teachers of just like, oh, like I can come and just kind of like bitch and moan and complain and I'm not going to get written up or you're not going to be like, you're a bad teacher. I'm like, no, man, like we you're all not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're all human. Like, you got to get that off your chest. And I want you to get off your chest with me, an adult who can handle it, mm-hmm. as opposed to with a student who well, you don't know how that kid's going to react. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and then we get that dynamic. And God damn it. Like, I'm glad that you were able to do that, man. Because honestly, like, 
I, I'm pretty privileged right now. I think my, our admin situation has improved greatly. And I think it's a great situation. But I think what you, you, you really hit the nail on the head. You need to make sure that you, you give confidence to your teachers to be able to do things and that they know that you have their back. That's ultimately what we need. Yeah. You hit the nail right on the head, you know? And I think so going back to, to what, like the whole thing, like I think a lot of things needs, a lot of things need to change, man. Like I think unions need to change. I think tenure system needs to change. You know, I think that we need to make sure that we, um, you know, pay these educators a little bit more. Um, I need to make sure that these kids have the opportunity to have, you know, all these different electives. So the funding in the schools need to be different. Mm -hmm. It's just, there's so many different things and there's so many different routes that it's going to be so difficult to, and it sucks because like we want police to change. We're not really talking about education at the moment. And because of COVID, it's probably not going to be something that we talk about. It's going to be one of the things that just kind of gets pushed, unfortunately. Yeah. But I think November, isn't that when they're going to start having the uh, election to change the property tax rule? Oh, for Prop 13? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that could help. You know, that's that's a step in the right direction. But I mean, like, I mean, realistically, like, the country could actually just, you know, tax corporations. Dude, <laughs> I mean, that that's what we want. And, yeah. you know, uh, I've been involved about that, about, you know, we need to tax billionaires their fair share. You know, it's ridiculous that we're paying more in taxes than some of these corporations. It's crazy to me, yeah. you know? And and it's not this idea of like, oh, we're, we're taking from the rich and giving to the poor. It's like, dude, they have outrageous wealth. Yeah. The gap is ridiculous, yeah. you know? And if we really want people to do well in this country, we have to be that self. I mean, there's people. The problem is America is so individualistic, you know. Yeah. That's how it's been. My freedom, my freedom. I want one. I my. I get to have my gun. I get to do all this. I want mine. You're not going to tax me. That's America, you know. This country started because people didn't want to pay their taxes, yeah. you know. Like, that's, well, it's fair. It, rich people didn't want to. Yeah. Pay. <laughs> that's what this, I mean. And, and, you know, ultimately, I think it got co-opted by some people who had, like, really good ideas. Yes. Just, oh, we got fireworks here. <laughs> yeah, we've been getting fireworks pretty much every night. Yep. It's like, it makes it hard for the kids to fall asleep. I'm like, oh, come on, y'all. But, no, I mean, like, you know, I, 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 I'm not one of those people who think, like, America is irredeemably racist or like irredeemably like elitist. Um, I th I, our, the irony is, I think the reason of that is because of how we built the folklore of America. Of like, you know, we're standing against like, like no representation and unfair things. And I'm like, I was like, ultimately, I was like, when the fight comes down to it, that's what that fight is going to be. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be real hard for corporate America if like all the poor people came together and like, we're not represented and yep. government's not fair. Uh, you're taking all our money and you're not using it for us. Uh, when do we get ours? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the irony is like all these people are like, oh, you're just going to like, we'll keep <laughs> I think I heard still listen to Joe Rogan a lot. <laughs> I haven't, but I, I, I'm a fan. Yeah. Um, I need but to he, check him out a little bit more. Yeah, he had some thing recently. He's like, he's like, never before has it been so blatant. He's like, where you have this country saying, you know, you have these failing cities like Detroit or Chicago, and you have like education failing. You've got all these underpaid, you know, you have these like, like, you know, all these institutions that need assistance. And the government says like, you know, we don't have money for that. But then as soon as, you know, in 2008 was the first time where it's like, Oh, here's, you know, here's $2 trillion for like the, for the home loan crisis for wall street. It's a bail them out. What about all the people who just lost their homes? And then again, it's like, well, you know, we don't have money for that. I mean, ignoring the fact that we spend like how many trillions on war every Dude, year. That's my argument, man. If we were to put 10, 15% of what people of what this country puts in the military into education, that would be such a drastic amount. And you don't, uh, it's yeah. just shocking, man. It's, it's shocking. It's insane. And then it's like, okay, but then 
I mean, especially like now where it's like, okay, you guys, we don't have money for this. We don't have money for a COVID response. Oh, shit, the economy's failing. Here's $4 trillion for big businesses. Um, we're going to put a cap on what small businesses can get of like mm-hmm. $2 million. But like, you know, these big corporations are really, that's like, but they don't, they don't need it. And they haven't been completely transparent in who's getting these, nope. these you know, resources. Yeah. I mean, so, I remember AXA was sending out something about, uh, or maybe like that's the, was it the administrative, um, essentially the administrative group for t- uh, California education. Um, I think it was them or somebody was like, did you know that like charter schools are applying for small business loans during this time? Because they're saying like, oh, we're like alone and we're losing money. And it's like, no, but you still get all your money because you're still got student enrollment. Like, it's like, if that's the case, man, I sh- we should apply that for my school. <laughs> Seriously. But yeah. then they'll just be like, oh, you're a public sector. You know, you, you, you can't, you're, you're, yeah. your, your hands are tied, which is ridiculous. The fact of the matter is, is that's how it's been. These bailouts go to the people who at the end of the day do not really need it. And the people who are in the low to middle class don't see a dime. And if they do, it's $1,200. Yeah. $1,200. You think that's going to help people who are really in need? Especially well, there might be another $1,200 in three months or something. Oh, really? <laughs> another in three months. <laughs> Ridiculous, man. Yeah. You know, and, and, and at the end of the day, I can't help but see that as something that's political. No, I mean, oh, it, look, I gave you $2,400 vote for me in November, yeah. you know? And the unfortunate part is some people will look at that and think that the president himself went to his own bank account and gave him $1,200. That's yeah. what some people legit think. Well, you know? and that's what he'll say. <laughs> exactly. He will legitimately say that. He's like, I've given you all $1,200. Like, you should be thanking me. And it's like, dude, that's our money, first off. And second, no, that's really just number one. That's our money. Mm-hmm. Give it back. I mean, I'm, I mean, I was like trying to think like, okay, what like small steps of reform could like possibly be put in place that maybe like you would get like the broadest unity on. And the one that I think I still stand by is the idea of um, when you fill out your tax form, you get to choose which segments of the government your money goes to. Yeah like an a la carte sort of thing, right? Yeah. Where directly is my money going to? Yeah, okay. Like, I, yeah, you know what? Even libertarians would probably be like, you know what? I'll support public works because I like driving on roads. Exactly. You know? But then the thing is, is like, well, other people are going to do that, so I'm not going to support it. And if you have a mass of people doing that, are we going to have enough money for the public works? You know, well, it, that I'm just playing devil's advocate with that. No, I, and, and that's like, the thing. It's like, I mean, maybe at first but then as people like you know go through it they're gonna be like oh wait well this last year i didn't put any money in public works and the the roads have gone to hell so clearly i need to put money there so it's like it's one of those things where it's like yeah it would be a learn by doing but you do taxes every year the budget changes every year Mm -hmm. i think you know then you especially it's like those people who are like policing is important okay put more money put your money into it yeah there you go um I mean, especially in the federal government, where it would just be like, okay, like, what what do you want to help fund? I was like, I don't even think they should have just like the defense. Do you want to to fund defense? I think it should be broken down more of like, do you want to fund like, you know, foreign wars? It's like, "Mm." yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to take a pass there. Do National Guard, you know, or something. Exactly. Or, uh, you know, exactly. Do you want to fund like, the you know newest equipment i'm like well our stuff still probably works <laughs> i mean it, again it, it would depend it's like i mean i would definitely still fund special forces i think mm-hmm. even if you reduce the standing army i was like we should maintain like a highly skilled special force similar to the cops <laughs> like, exactly again i think there should be swat for special occasions and then cops for the everyday uh, so here's so- my question for you albert do you really trust the average person to make the correct or a decision that will help people the most when it comes to choosing what your taxes are going into? Because the way I see it is that's just another opportunity for the media, for propaganda to come out 
and tell people what they should be putting their taxes into. It's already happening with things like Fox News and CNN, you know? People aren't really making decisions on, on themselves. They're sort of just saying like, okay, what does my favorite person on TV have to say? What am I gonna be thinking now, you know? Whereas people like you and I, we're gonna do a little bit more research, you know? And I'll admit, I'm, I'm sometimes guilty of not doing as much research as, yeah. as I should with this sort of thing. But at the end of the day, we will probably do what research we wanna do if we had to allocate where our taxes were gonna to go to. But I, there are a lot of people in this country who really don't care about that, unfortunately. Well, I, I think that's true to a tiny extent. I, I think but the difference is, is like for the media, one, they're talking about like, okay, like, you're talking about like, what are they going to post on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, mm -hmm. whatever. And then ultimately like, who they're going to vote for and who you vote for is a lot harder because like, you're never going to get the person who follows hundred percent of your beliefs. Mm -hmm. Like I tell my liberal friends, like I probably would have voted for Tulsi Gabbard. And they're like, <laughs> Ugh, what? Uh, God, I'm sorry. she's not perfect. I'd love to know why. I'd love to know why. why? <laughs> Maybe we can talk about that later. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, okay, that's fine. But I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm just like, like, you know, they, there's that reaction. I'm like, well, there are, are like many of our policies that I agree with. I was like, and there's also like, I like, I think there's, for me, there are more important things and there's less important things. I'm like, okay, so that's kind of where that kind of ends up. I was mm -hmm. like, but with, with your money, I think, I think what you're underestimating is how picky people can be with their money. That's true. Or, like, yeah, they might support things, but they are genuinely going to support things that they believe in. Mm -hmm. So it's like Republicans, I can almost say they're going to probably with their money, they're going to support the military. Mm -hmm. They're going to support, you know, cops. They're going to support like infrastructure to some extent. And then, you know, they're going to, they're going to be very specific about like, okay, like, I think this is what it should be. Same with liberals. I think like you get to liberals and they're going to be like, well, education, yeah, education, yeah. I mean, the rich ones are going to be like cops. <laughs> and then, but, you know, I, like, I think public, public like, services, like public welfare, services, you know, to help people. Public health. I think what you'll end up with is a, a larger, like, spread of the money as opposed to these highly concentrated, like, all of our money goes here, all of our money goes here. Um, I can see that. And I think also, like, as a part of it, like, I think there's going to have to be a lot more of, like, here's your receipt sort of situation of like, how did education spend your money this year? Because at the end of it, like, you know, prior to tax season, that's what voters are really going to want to know. They're going to want to know like, okay, I did, did this really do something. Yeah. What did it actually do? Because I noticed that like I paid money to education, but my school still laid off five teachers. So what the hell's up with that? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, like, you know, if they can't explain it, or if it's just going up to the, again, the government end, then it's like, oh, sorry, too bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sad. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I mean, I generally do have faith in Americans when it comes to their own self-interest. <laughs> like, I, You're right. You're right. Absolutely. And, and so the more we can make them personally culpable, because even right now, there are people who vote for, like, voted for Donald Trump, yeah, some of them were like, damn, I messed up. Some of them were like, well, but he did some good things, mm -hmm. you know? In their eyes, right? If yeah. they're looking to have some of the wall built and all these other things that he was saying, then sure. He's definitely doing what he said he was going to do. I mean, you know, and far, you know, as much as we talk shit about like the trade war with China, that kind of needs to happen like i don't know what to say i was like this showed like when all of our critical supplies are being made in china i was like that yeah. that's not smart at all <laughs> mm -hmm. so i mean there are things... to be a balance the problem yeah. is you can't do it by vilifying people yeah you know you have yeah. to do it by bringing people together and that's how you're gonna have to do it but this this guy's more he's uh, he's looking at dividing more than he is united yeah. in my opinion well, he's also blaming China for our corporation's actions. <laughs> oh, screw China. They're doing all this. I'm like, no, man. Like, and, you know, Amazon did that. Apple did that. Like, mm -hmm. like, all of these corporations have done that. I'm like, I like my phone that I only paid $1,000 for because I didn't Seriously. want to pay 
three thousand dollars. And that was made possible through legislation. That's why we have to look at, you know, yeah. our elected officials. Like, really, what can a common person do at the end of the day? Really, we have to just exercise our right in this democracy to, to try and get an elected official that's going to, you know, align themselves with our values. Yeah. The and that's why I think the tax thing would work. Because yeah, again, seriously. Like, way more personal. You're like, wait, I decide where my taxes go? Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, like, yeah, I don't have a lot of time, but I'm probably going to research this a little bit because I need something that's going to help my life the most. Mm -hmm. And then they'll invest in that. Whereas, like, again, public officials, you're like, like, I don't know, like, this guy says this stuff, but everybody calls him a liar. And then this guy says this stuff, but he's like, I don't agree with it, most of it. So I guess I don't, I guess I'll vote for the liar and hope that <laughs> he maybe tells the truth. That's how it was. That's literally 2016. Yeah. Yeah, man, there's a deep, deep problem. And um, I don't know if you watch Patriot Act on Netflix. It's a really good show. <laughs> was, they're like, you'll love it. Even my conservative principles, like, <laughs> you should watch Patriot Act. And I'm like, okay, bro. Like, like Honestly, it's really good. You'd love it. Yeah. Check it out. There, there's, a, there's an episode that he literally just talked about um, the problem with our elections and that it's like a winner take all sort of thing i think and and he made an argument for ranked choice voting oh yeah i'd be right down. and and i think that's another thing that could really really help you know because as someone who's left leaning it kind of sucks that like the guy who is on my side is going to be joe biden you know <laughs> nothing against joe biden but i just don't think that he's the right person and everything that just sucks that joe we're forced biden. i'm sorry everything against joe biden buddy <laughs> <laughs> I I know, dude. It just sucks that like in November when we're when we have to vote, like yeah, yeah. It it just doesn't seem like a crazy great opportunity as as someone to come out and vote. Like really, these are the two I got to choose from. Yeah, and and it just sucks. And that's what they want. They don't want you out voting. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's another thing. You know, it's like the shittier your choices, the less likely you'll come out and complain about shit. Like, oh, God, man. man, there's just so many issues that. We can't really fix everything with one catch-all. It's going to have to be years of just like chipping away, you know, and starting somewhere and hoping that it works. But, but at some point, this, <laughs> again, as history major, or, you know, a history major and like a history teacher, like, <laughs> uh, at some point, the, the Tinder kind of lights I'm like and I'm very curious it's like I'm like I don't want it to like that's the last thing that I want mm -hmm. especially since I have kids like I really don't want to go through that but it, it, it's almost like we're in a cold civil war you know mm -hmm. we're just it's crazy divided and and it just feels like something's gonna snap like I think you're you're on the right track you know but I mean that's the weird part where it's like I think people have like enough example of like the like the actual atrocity of war now where like they're okay with it except for if it's here mm -hmm. so, like if we could fight our civil war in a completely different country i think this country would be like <laughs> like let's bring it on <laughs> yeah like, one half of our country was like supporting like one group somewhere and the other half was like okay we're gonna fight by proxy like i think our country would do that like in a heartbeat yeah totally um, or if we had like giant mechs that we could fly down to Antarctica, and <laughs> duke it out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. Like that's why, like, I would, I would be one hundred percent down with ranked choice, and I would actually really prefer if we went back to how the vice president used to be chosen. You it was know. through election too, right? Well, it was, it was. First candidate was president. Second candidate, runner-up, was vice president. Oh wow! I yes, that no. would be really cool. I think that was before be really Jefferson. I think right? Was that because mm. it was Adams and Adams had? Uh, I don't remember specifically. <laughs> yeah, I'm like that's that's like <laughs> specifics. <laughs> Not my best in history, but like I mean, I think it was Jefferson who was like, hey, like. No, this is going to be my vice president, and everyone was like, "Okay, cool." But like, I really do think, like, I think if magically out of nowhere you had like a liberal and a conservative, and let's say the conservative was going to be president, 
and the liberal was going to be vice president. And they're like, you know what? We're running. Uh, we're running together. We're both well known. Uh, and uh, we're running for president. I think they would get a lot of votes because I think a lot of people would be like, hey, my voice is going to get heard. That person's like, just like me. Like, they have all my crazy liberal ideas. And then all the conservatives are like, yeah, this, but they're talking. They're talking. Mm -hmm. they're Having a dialogue. And it would be a check, you know, another, yeah. another one of the checks and balances. 100%. Because you have the president, but then ultimately it's the VP who presides over this, you know, Congress. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, like, I mean, you would, I, I, like, I genuinely think that, like, that would legitimately need to be the ticket. And, like, I would almost, like, if Biden chose, like, some crazy liberal person, I'd be like, okay, that's kind of what I want. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or, I mean, but the problem there is, like, you're not going to get any of, like, the conservative voters. Yeah. I get the centrist. A lot of conservative centrists I've seen, been seeing, have been, like, moving towards Biden and over Trump because they're just like, no, we need, not whatever the hell Trump is. Mm -hmm. like, even they're like, mm, I'm having a hard time with it. But, what do you think about introducing a third party? Do you think that would help at all? Because it mean, feels like the Democratic Party specifically, it's it's trying to cast too wide of a net. Yeah. You know, and um, like there are people who are hyper liberal, you know, Bernie supporters who wanted to vote for him that are now stuck with with biden as as the candidate and then you have the more establishment democrat and they're all in the same tent yeah and that's and that's tough because there are more and more people that are you know going the other way yeah no i mean i think for me like i think it needs to happen i mean that's that that's also like always in the back of my mind in consideration voting during presidential elections of like if i can vote let's say the green party was like, say what you want about like Jill Stein and some of her crazy stuff. But like, if I could vote the green party up to 5%, I was like, and I mean, realistically, like overall is which way is California going to go? It always, I mean, you know, barring some insanity, like it goes blue. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, so California goes blue. But like, if my vote is part of like the larger vote that pushes this third party, into like again like into now you're a national party you get all the funding you're good like i i think that's worth it <laughs> like, and you know it, a lot of people are like i mean here's the, here's the part of me that like likes trump and this is the crazy part which is that like think about from our youth to now and think about what we've been okay with and what we've slowly given away. And now in the last four years, think about what everybody has been like, spotlight on government. What's he doing? Why is he doing that? Don't do that. That's crazy. Please stop doing that. Like, I mean, and that's, <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like, there was so much stuff under Obama once he got elected that I fundamentally, like once he started doing that, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, mm -hmm you're not supposed to prosecute these whistleblowers. You said you were going to help uh, them and use them. I'm like, what? what? Yeah, I'm still salty about Snowden. That's a big one for me. Yeah, but. that's a huge one. I'm just like, and, and again, Snowden was fighting for our rights. So I'm like, what are you, <laughs> like, okay. yeah. like at that point, I'm just like, all right, well, you know what? Um, no one's perfect, dude. And yeah, it sucks because, uh, like, when it comes to the president, it's like we have to choose the lesser of, of the evils. Yeah. Unfortunately. But see, again, and then here, but here's my real question, too. Like, is voting for Biden really the lesser of evils? Because what you're going to have is disengagement once he gets elected, except for on the conservative side and the ultra liberal side. But the large, large portion centrist in this country, because there is a large group of centrists, they're going to stop paying attention because they're like, this is like, this is like Bill. This is like Obama. We're fine. This is like Bush. Like, you know, he's like a centrist white guy. Um, I mean, you'll still, again, you'll still have the conservatives, the, the arch conservatives who are going to be like attacking everything he does. But for a lot of the public, I think they're just going to be like, okay, well, our guy won. We're good. Hmm. And so, I mean, especially like considering this is a time of like activism and change, I'm just like, or, <laughs> or you vote for Trump, 
and everyone gets super outraged. They're like, how the hell did this guy win again? What the fuck is wrong? So, with so you're almost saying that a second term will galvanize the United States even more, like the population even more to paying attention to politics for the future? Yeah. So you're saying if we if we overcome Trump, then the movement will be over? I'm saying that that that, that has happened in the past. That's what sure. with Obama. And and it, I won't I won't say that I'm not scared about it. Um, oh no, I'm terrified. Absolutely. I'm, I'm terrified of it. Term, but but <laughs> here's here's my saving grace with that. I at least at the very least, and this is where the VP pick is gonna be very important. I at the very least hope that if and when Biden wins the election in November, that his cabinet will be filled with people that will, you know, mirror the values of the people who want, who voted him in. You know, Biden himself is a very centrist, but he's going to have a cabinet that's progressive in this certain way, progressive in that way, you know, and then hopefully be able to drive policy in, a, in the direction that voters want. Has he mentioned I, cabinet's going to be? He has not specifically. But if you look like, why not get someone like Bernie in the cabinet or Warren in the cabinet? You know, like why not allow them to do something within a specific cabinet? Like imagine Bernie in as like secretary of education. Imagine what he could do. Yeah. But again, I don't think that's what's going to happen because ultimately at the end of the day, Biden, I mean, he is bought and paid for. Mm -hmm. he really so it's is. just going to be more of the status quo. By the establishment I mean, I Democrats. Be, I would be surprised if Hillary Clinton ends up back in that cabinet. Ugh. Like, legitimately. Hell, maybe even Bill Clinton. No. Bring both the Clintons. He's just like, all right, like, let's bring them in. Like, you know, <laughs> you, the, the firebrand, I mean, maybe he'll bring Bernie in, but he's definitely going to put him, like, he might bring him in. And I feel he has to. Not even, not, maybe not necessarily a cabinet position, but he's going to have to do something to sort of sway those voters that voted for Bernie to voting for him. Cause I know a lot of Bernie supporters who are like, yeah, I'm not voting for Biden, yeah. you know? And after Bernie was out, I was pretty disillusioned with the whole thing. And I myself was like, why the hell am I going to even vote? Yeah. It doesn't matter at the end of the day, but you, you have to realize that this is the process. It's the ebb and flow of, of, you know, conservative and liberalism. There will always be an ebb and flow. Someone's going to come back harder. Like we got a liberal black man as president and now we have a racist white man as president. You know, like it just went, it went in a pendulum and that's how it's going to be. But I just think that there is a breaking point right now with a lot of voters to where if, if and when the Democrats do win the presidency, like they're going to have to try and address some of the things that we've been clamoring for. Otherwise, we, they fear getting another party that's going to get broken, you know, like another broken part, like a third party. Like if they really want to make sure that they keep the voters, they're going to have to. And I think we're getting to that point specifically, at least for me personally, you know, I mean, like if I, if I vote for Biden and I see that none of the things that I wanted starts happening, then why am I going to vote Democrat again? I think that's where I have like, maybe that's where my disillusionment comes from. Cause I think I have one more voting cycle on you. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and and like and for me like that's what happened yeah like i i saw you it, had that hope and it didn't I, I had hope and change mm -hmm. and it was just completely shat on and mm -hmm. i was just like and then, like you said this was a liberal black man supposedly mm -hmm. and it was like so if I then of essentially voting for like Bill Clinton part two, except mm -hmm. like not as creepy. <laughs> Seriously, not, right? Yeah, like not molesting his staff, but like the policies are the same, the approach is the same, and your lockstep and your cabinet. What I mean, he did not have a liberal cabinet. I'm sorry. I think. It, look, his. I, I mean, agree. His, I, mean, I agree, yeah. but, but Obama, like, you have to realize what kind of position he was in. You know, no, I do. he I is do. a black, the first black man. He's not going to be able to be that complete liberal, and he's going to have to sort of play that establishment game. You understand? You know? I'm happy he wasn't shot. Like, yeah. nice. assassinated. <laughs> assassinated. Yeah, man. <laughs> like realistically, that's what I thought was going to happen all eight years. 
I was waiting for like just some crazed person to be like, I'm going to take this black guy out. He's not even supposed to be born president. He's, he's born out of this country. I'm like, what are you talking about, Trump? Like, you can't mm-hmm. take the gun into the White House. It's crazy how he was one of the big people in the birther movement. Oh, you know? That's crazy to me. But I mean, it's not surprising at all, but whatever. Yeah, of course not, but it's like now he's the president. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, it just shows how far from reality a lot of people are, that they elected a reality TV president. Yeah. It's just... It's just shocking. I, don't know. Shocking, I mean, man. I'm at the point now where I'm kind of like a a vote no party person. Like, unless I feel that your politics 100%, not 100%, but like 80% match what like I think will move us forward in a positive way, I I'm not gonna vote for you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, and I mean, I'm going to look at your policies. And again, like you said, that's like a privilege that you and I have. Mm-hmm. Like not only being college educated and being able to read those awful documents because they <laughs> are awful every time, mm-hmm. well, just the fact that we have the time to do that. Absolutely. I mean, like, you know, most of our families, they're just like working their asses off. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay. Make like, sense. But again, then it's like, I feel like it, the burden's even more on us to do like that job and be vocal about it. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I'm not being vocal, like, again, not in any way saying we should be vocal at school i don't think (laughs) no that's a different realm and and i think as teachers we understand that you know because we have to make sure that we give a true balanced report you know but it's tough man yeah position i don't know man we're going interesting places so what did you want to know about uh, me and voting for Tulsi Gabbard? <laughs> oh, I just want to know what specifically you liked about her, her policies and why you would vote for her. I mean, one... I'd love to have the dialogue. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the, the first thing that came to my mind was, like, one, she's very, like, anti-corruption. Like, she's, she definitely backed, like, Bernie's, like, we should not have money in politics. Mm-hmm. Um, And also, just honestly, she was very much like, we need to end all these foreign wars and regime change wars. Mm -hmm. Like, those two, I feel like, are the biggest drivers, like the military-industrial complex. Like, like they're pumping money into it, trying to keep those two things going, because that's how they can ensure they're getting paid. Um, And I felt like having her come in with that message. Especially being a veteran, right? Yeah. Oh, and And that's the other part, which is like, there's not like... I mean, conservatives could try, but they'd have a hard time being like, oh, she's just a coward. It's like, well, mm-hmm. she's a veteran. She actually served. Mm-hmm. You know, like, she's not talking shit about veterans. She's not saying, like, hey, let's cut these people off and stop paying for them. She's saying, let's bring them home. And now let's, like, use these forces and these, like, our powerful youth to, like, build this country up. And so I think that for me was like a big part of it. And I also felt like she actually probably, if she had been chosen, would have had a damn good chance of winning. Like, I really do feel like a lot of... She would have got a lot of Republicans. Yeah, I think a lot of Republicans, a lot of centrists would have been like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, you have the social conservative ones that would have been like, I liked her in her youth when she didn't like gay people, but now now I disagree with her. You know? Yeah, man. and. That kind of speaks to the problem of the whole election thing to me too. It's like we like like we're talking about, you know, we have to play the game. Who is going to reach the broadest audience? Yeah. And that just shows that like America's way too big. Way yeah. too big, man. You can't tell me my life is the same as someone in South Dakota, you know? You can't. Yeah. But yet we're American and it's yeah, tough. Yeah, access, buddy. <laughs> Which is true. What was what was that? <laughs> yeah, you have internet access. It's like high speed. <laughs> seriously man but no that's interesting and your points are completely valid and uh you know i wouldn't have minded either i feel like biden and i you know i understand why he was like okay like my vp is going to be female but i feel like it really undermined like the groups that he could have brought in if he'd been like i'm just gonna make bernie my vp and now i wanted that so badly you know like I mean, hell, even if he'd been like, I want to make Andrew Yang my VP. You're like, yeah. oh, okay, like, that's random and cool. Like, all right, I can kind of get behind that. Who are you thinking is going to pick? Uh, well, obviously not Amy Klobuchar. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> she just dropped out. Dropped out. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's got to be Abrams or or Harris, right? But and and then the thing is, is like Gabbard absolutely owned her. <laughs> I mean, just, I'm sorry. She's just like you made it illegal for single moms, and you sent them to prison, mm-hmm. and you took their kids away from them because they couldn't get their kids to school on time yeah. because they're single and struggling. Kamala did some bad things, man. She did awful things. I mean, she was the prosecutor. She chose what to prosecute in mm. so many areas, and she did shit. So it's like, mm. I mean, if I hear anybody, and I hate to say this, but anybody who supports Black Lives Matter be like, we should vote for Kamala Harris. I'm like, the fuck are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, you truly don't see, you know, the effect that, he, that she had on Black Lives, <laughs> <laughs> which is a very negative in California. Black lives, Latino lives, poor yeah, white men. It's like all the poor folks, like all the folks that she could target. And I'm just like, I, like... Like, personally, I feel like he needs to go and find, like, just some, if he's no a name. female, he needs to find just some liberal, black, or Latina mayor or governor who's, or, like, hell, even, like, state rep or something like that, or, you know, somebody who's, like, familiar with politics, but maybe not super immersed in it, but who's been consistent in their message and, like, mm-hmm. their actions. I, like, because... That's the only way I would trust he would make a balanced cabinet. But if he mm-hmm. brought, like, if it was him and Harris, I don't see any way at all that cabinet would end up being balanced. I don't. Now, now you got me all scared, man. <laughs> my my whole po- my whole point with this is like I hope that it becomes a progressive cabinet, you know. But if it just becomes another establishment one, then I'll be just as disillusioned as you were after the 2008 election. And, I mean, and that's not good. <laughs> well, I mean, another part too. But I mean, but it is, I think there's also that other part, which it is good. Like, I, it's like voting from a position of fear has never sat well with me. Mm-hmm. And like, people are like, oh, you have the privilege to vote that way. I'm like, no. Like, I, do, you, do you see my skin color? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm like one of the, I'm, I'm half of the country. That's one of the few countries that actually beat the United States in a war. <laughs> I'm like, do you understand like the anger that's hidden under that? I was like, yeah. like additionally, like I'm half white. So it's like, I'm a race trader. Like that's crazy also, that you have both. Yeah. I'm like, so like, I mean, I understand where people are like, oh, like, you know, you've got a lot of privilege in your voting. I was like, but one, again, like, I feel and I, this needs to be emphasized. And this is one of the really the things I really liked about last week tonight with John Oliver. I love John Oliver. Yeah. I mean, he had a great point, which is that local elections affect you way more. Mm-hmm. Like, listen, like, I would rather throw my support behind a third party for the presidential election and get a third party recognized, whether it's mm-hmm. independence, whether it's, uh, again, green, whether it's some other random fucking like party, probably not peace and freedom, but you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they go a little racist sometimes. Over yeah. there. <laughs> I'll fit in well there. Um, but like, I would rather throw my support in and get like a third party recognized as a national party in that hope at this point. And because vote know, specifically for your local election. Yeah, and then like, exactly. And then be very targeted about my local and my state elections where it's like, this is what's really going to impact me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, say what you want about privilege, but again, like, I feel, you know, it, it's just, it's the nature of the beast. And it's like, what are you willing to, what's, what's worth it to you? And for me, I think at this point, what's worth it to me is like to fundamentally change the national system. I need to like not be voting along party line. Of, I need to not vote out of fear. I need to vote out of like strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we're being strategic here and not to go, you know, devil's advocate with this, no, feel free. Oh. but I believe it's important to start with leadership from the top down and have a very strong leadership from the top down. And it, it's like a school, right? If your admin is, not doing well and constantly dividing, you're going to have a divided staff, right? If we vote for this, for this idea of the third party, which I would love to have a third party, but let's say we do. 
it's going to take votes in my mind specifically away from a democratic side. So all those votes that could have potentially gone for the third party could potentially have gone more on one and the other, and it could have swayed the election in one way or another, you know? And then we lose that hope of having at least a competent leader that can trickle down to the rest. If we have someone who's not going to be constantly dividing us up top and who wants to lead the country and bring us back together, that will bleed into other aspects of our democracy, our foreign policy, the, everything, right? And it's just like, I feel as though we need that figurehead. Yes, we need to make sure we focus on local, lo local elections because at the end of the day, those are the things that are really going to affect us. The roads that we drive on, the police that are, are roaming our street, the law, you know, any little thing. But if we don't have that leadership component there, that's a, it, it's a big part of the world right now because we need to make sure that we are viewed a certain way. We can't be viewed as a laughing stock that we currently are. We just can't, we can't do that anymore. But, you know? but then my counter argument to that, and this is where I hate it. It's like, I really am arguing the conservative part, but, <laughs> hey, part. but it's, it's necessary to have the dialogue. Yeah, but like Biden, <laughs> Maybe I'm like stuck on like the eight years of Uncle Uncle Joe Biden. Creepy Uncle Joe, yeah, I get it. <laughs> creepy Uncle Joe Biden. But I mean, even before I knew about the creepy stuff, it was just like bumbling Uncle Joe Biden. Like during the Obama presidency, I was never like, there's our leader and another possible leader. It was always like, there's our leader. And I'm assuming the person that <laughs> brought on to appease the centrist. Like, oh. Yeah, that's exactly how I saw it too. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, ultimately, it turned out they're both pretty centrist. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing is like coming into this election cycle, I didn't necessarily have like the highest ideals of him. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel really right now, what we're looking at is two crazy fucking uncles at Thanksgiving. Like, really. And it's like, one is just the fucking racist guy where you're just, mm -hmm. these Mexican criminals and you're like, dude. Why do you got to be saying Kung flu? Like, come yeah, on. Exactly. You don't, don't got to be saying things like that. <laughs> like, do that. Black lives matter. So do all lives. I'm like, oh, uh, bro. Like, I understand. I understand you're old and like <laughs> old people sometimes are super racist, but like, can you like, step it back and just pass the goddamn mashed potatoes like I asked for? <laughs> and then it's yeah, like, it. and then like Biden, I feel is like the uncle who's just like, let me tell you another story about like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Like, Dude, I, I'm not arguing against that. I do uh, not like yeah. Biden either. But no, and that's a hard, like, which is like, I understand your part. And again, and a lot of this might, eat, like I said, a lot of this will probably be dependent on who he chooses as a VP candidate. Yeah, I agree. If he chooses some centrist asshole who has no personality, then I'm going to be like, no, like, I, I can't. I can't blow for bleh or bleh, like, I, I can't. I need something to hold on to. I need, right? yeah, I need something. Whereas, like, if Biden chooses, like, a super charismatic, like, intelligent person who I'm like, okay, I think Biden's probably going to die, like, two years into the presidency of just, like, a heart attack or aneurysm or some shit, <laughs> and this person's going to take over, I'm okay with that. I'm terrified of, I'm terrified of Trump dying in office. Because then Mike like, can take over. <laughs> That'd be worse. <laughs> like oh, the, the jokes when we he was first running were like when they were running together, it's like, oh my god, if Trump dies, we're gonna have the handmaid's tale. Like uh, that <laughs> die. Like I don't want the handmaid's tale. So it's just like Yeah. Man. I mean, it's, like, I don't know. I mean we are stuck between literally like a compost pile and just a pile of shit. It's like, it smells good right now. May, this one might grow, or maybe we put too much shit in it. And yeah, maybe it's still trash. At the yeah, end of the day. it could all just be trash. Um, but again, it's like, it's too soon to tell. And, and again, like, and that's where I kind of feel, again, like where we're at with like education and policing, which is like, we're still at this point where it's like too soon to tell how this is going to work out. And like right now, I'm trying real hard to be not complicit in the system and do what I can. But what I really don't want to be is kind of like some of these like super progressive folks who are educators 
who are like 50 and 60 who've been progressive their whole life and they're still talking about this system that fucks kids over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like... I've done nothing to change the situation or, yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of my friends was like, I think he was talking about like, you know, oh, these, you know, these communities want cops. They like cops. They love cops. I'm like, yes, that is true. I was like, but how long in America has it been a running gag about minorities and cops? I was like, because I remember watching Mel Brooks films, and that was hilarious. That like Blazing Saddles, <laughs> <laughs> like, like that's well known. I'm like, there's. We've been seeing movies and stuff like this for forty years, man. You know, I, was like, I mean, listen, listen, just listen to stand up of black comedians from like the 70s and 80s to today like the, mm-hmm. that is a trend that follows it of like the cop came up and i was like yes sir and blah blah blah. i mean i remember Chappelle, and he's like it's 7 10 a.m uh, 7 10 p.m i've got the newspaper and i'm like touching myself on the balcony <laughs> like yeah or like, the let's sprinkle some crack on them and get yes, out of here you know like it's it i totally see it. it's been talked about and it's nothing has been done yeah, Nothing, I, man. that's the thing. It's like, oh, it's just those circumstances. It's like, no, man. Like, this shit happens. And yes, not all cops. Just like not all teachers. Like, exactly. Not all people ever. But and the like, system it's itself. Like, it's like it's a question of like, are there enough? Is there enough of a positive force? And this is what you were talking about. Like, this is my question for you. Is like, I assume this is what you're referring to with unions, which is like, there is such a large part of unions that are like amazing. You don't but. don't make us change. Uh-huh. Like, don't make us change. You're asking for too much, and it's like, but you need to change. Mm-hmm. Like you do. And it's like, well, you should definitely get paid more. But yeah, it's definitely a bad look for unions. It's a bad look if we're not able to fire these cops, and not just union cop unions, but every union, because if people see that that's what unions do, people are going to be less inclined to trust them. But. Uh, Look, I'm 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 part of a union. I love the fact that my union's going to protect me, all that sort of stuff. But at the same time, I think accountability needs to change on both sides, including teachers, yeah. including teachers. You know, this idea of tenure or tenure after two years, it's great, but that you have job security. But like you said, it incentivizes the mediocrity to continue. Yeah. So it's like a double-edged sword, but. Um, I don't know, something needs to change with it. Some sort of legislation that allows easier hiring and firing in certain situations, you know? Well, I mean, I know, I mean, and this is, like, I, I'm not going into details on this one because I don't have all the details, but, like, <laughs> I've, like, I've known, like, other admin have told me stories about districts, like, whether they're pri- or private schools, where, like, kids have been molested and the teach in this district and the, the school instead of like, I mean, what they need to do, get this person arrested. And yeah, it's going to get in the paper, but you did what's right. You got this pedophile out of education. They're like, we're going to let you go. Don't teach again. You know, uh, we're not really going to put it through to this, you know, to the authorities uh, or anything. Authorities or anything. Um, but we are going to pay this family off. It's the same. Yeah. Or silence, and I'm just like, that's fucked up. Like mm-hmm. that's ridiculous. And the, yeah, you bled bad publicity, but like I need to know that my kid's safe. Mm-hmm. You guys are doing this, and then still talking shit about Catholic churches, like yeah. No, <laughs> and it's like no, that's the very similar part of with cops. Yeah. Know? No, I mean, and that's the hard part too, which is like you and I, and probably me more because I've been more places. I've definitely met teachers that I'm like you should not be a teacher Mm -hmm. for sure like you either maybe you used to be in love with it before but you're done now and that was as a teacher and i was like i didn't know how to like say anything at that point Mm -hmm. and i didn't understand why they're still fucking teaching i'm like fucking go and they're like well you know what else am i gonna do that's gonna pay so well and blah blah blah. i'm like you need to go (laughs) like Mm -hmm. you need to get the fuck out and the fact is is the unions protected those people the most because those are the people who joined the union and became the union, like elected officials? Yep, representatives or whatever. Like, yeah. Nobody else wanted to do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like nobody else has the time because they're trying to do well for the 
you know, so that's the hard part, which is like, again, like you said, I'm a union guy. Like, I, I think unions have done a lot of good things. And we've fought for unions for a long time. And I recognize that workers' rights are absolutely important in a capitalist system because they're just going to try to yeah. screw the workers. I understand that. But at the same time, there has to be a different level of accountability. Well, I mean, has to. I, I think personally, I feel like unions should evaluate their own members. I think they should have a board in there. And like, I feel like every teacher evaluation should be a joint evaluation with like a union rep and an admin. So it's like, so if the admin's like, dude, look at this shit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) One, then everything's above board. And then two, it's like, well, not only is like your admin saying it, but also like the teacher elected representative is also Mm -hmm. saying it. And then I feel like then it's like, okay, well then you have, you know, here's your improvement plan. You have two years of it or one year of it or whatever it is. And if you don't improve, then you're out. Um, but they won't ever agree to that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, you know, admins won't agree to it because they don't want to give up that power. That's school districts, admins, whatever. And unions won't agree to it because then they're, again, they'd have to actually hold members accountable. Yeah. And they don't want that. They just want those dues sometimes. Yeah, man. No, it's. It's a tricky situation, you know, it really is. Cause I, like you said, you don't want to completely get rid of them, but they're not going to agree to the changes. Well, what I, I don't want to see is them completely to be abolished, which is what a lot of conservatives want. You know, they're already pushing this charter school system to try and sort of undermine the unions. But um, I don't know, there, <laughs> there needs to be a solution, but it doesn't seem like it's clear. It's the same with cops, you know? Yeah the whole thing with qualified immunity and all the, all the protections that these cops have have continue to have. Well, I think it's just, I think both are going to have a day of reckoning. I mean, cops right now are having their day of reckoning, but I think honestly, like, especially for like CTA, I think they don't realize it, but they dug themselves a fairly deep grave back in March. Um, Cause I know that most of the unions in the state got the same thing from CTA saying like, here's the expectations for distance learning. You can't require filming or you can't require video conferencing. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't expect this. You can't expect that. Um, because like it's all new and like it's unreasonable to expect it. But I think a lot of families and like I've talked with a number of families that are like, what the fuck are your teachers getting paid for? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, well, this teacher is actually doing an hour Zoom meeting every day with their classes, um, and they have assignments every Tuesday and Thursday, and so, like, there's a day to, like, you know, talk about the assignment, and then a day to, like, go over the assignments with people who have further questions, and then they're due by, like, Friday, and they're like, yeah, but this teacher over here, like, one of my good friends is, like, um, his daughter's in first grade um in oak grove sorry bro (laughs) (laughs) he said the kindergarten teacher because his other daughter's in kindergarten he's like was great she did like 45 minutes every day like had all these assignments was working with the kids just did everything met with them individually at some points during during it just to check in he's like i loved her he's like first grade teacher sent 15 minutes of work every monday or like sent out like handouts on monday Uh and then every Friday at 11 o'clock did a 15 minute zoom meeting where she read a book and half the time she was late to that zoom meeting. (laughs) So, and so it's like, and he's like, I'm like, yeah. And and here's the problem is like, now you've given all these parents who already weren't really happy with education or happy with their taxes or more ammunition. Why why are we paying? Yeah. You've given this thing where it's like, well, when you needed us, Like, when we needed you, you weren't there. And then now you need us for a raise or you need us to, like, tell the state, you know, screw you. And so that's what I'm really worried about. And I think that's going to come – I think that might even affect that Prop 13 voting, honestly. Um, I think it could. And um, here's my thing with that. Like, no one – and unfortunately, this is how it is. Like, we, we didn't have enough time to prepare for the pandemic, unfortunately. Yeah. And that's a big factor. Now, to, to not be able to, you know, meet the, 
desires of the parents, like, I understand that. But I still think that we need some changes in terms of accountability. Yeah. And what I mean with that is, like, we need to have a unified system on, like, how are we going to hold these kids accountable? That's Mm -hmm. a big thing, right? Because the whole thing that my issue was with this, you know, distance learning that we had was that we really couldn't hold the kids truly accountable. Yeah. Right. We were just supposed to be happy that they were doing some of the work and that in turn, like what incentive do you give not only students to do the work if they're not being held accountable, what incentive are you giving the teacher? Yeah. Right. Like you're, you're, you're ultimately like, yes, you're, you're doing it for the benefit of the child and that they're learning and that, yes, I get that. But at the end of the day, if you can't hold them accountable, that's like one of the only things that teachers have in the classroom. Yeah. Which is, we can hold you accountable. So that's why you're going to do this work. We're going to do this together. And if I know that, then I'm going to put more effort into that. So that's why I'm hoping starting in the fall, when we do have that accountability piece a little bit more fleshed out that distance learning will be a little bit better. Will it meet the desires of the parents fully? Probably not. Yeah. But it's like, it. no, we tied, we tied a lot of teachers hands behind their back. But again, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, this is a perception thing. And to think perception thing, that's it. Yeah. That's the scary part. Yeah. I mean, if CTA had been like, yes, members have to do like some sort of conferencing, whether it's teleconferencing or video conferencing, they got to do some sort of conferencing during the week. And that's an expectation. Then it's like parents are like, okay, they're trying. And maybe it's not working out well. And like, hey, I can't get my kid to work. Okay, well, you know, at least I'm offering the service. Um, But I mean, I think there will be, I think, I I mean, honestly, I think when it starts back up, it's going to be graded. Like it can't not be because we'll yeah. have to do it for like ADA in order to like mm-hmm. get that ADA money. We'll have to be like, all right, like you they participated, they were here. They, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so I think schools will double down on that. But I think another thing, and it's funny that you brought it up. Maybe, maybe we should do a whole nother one on this, which is like, I'm down. <laughs> this I mean, is a, it's a lot of yeah, fun. Do another one. Cause it's getting late. I'm getting tired, but for sure. Yeah. Um, but no, but one thing I was thinking was like, like how, what does it say about education in America and that the only way we can motivate our students is a a threat? Yeah. Which is really what it is. And I was just like, yeah, I mean, this tells you the the hard part is, is like a lot of our kids know that our curriculum is useless because Mm -hmm. all they have to do is log online and see a thousand YouTubers say, I never have used, you know, my, my ancient history knowledge (laughs) for anything. You know, and that's why when I taught history, I always emphasize the skills. So I was like, yeah, you, you guys won't need to know these details, but you do need this skill of how to read this document yeah. mm-hmm. or how to make an argument. I was like, those ones are useful skills. Um, you know, and I did get more engagement because of that. But I'm like, there's still plenty of teachers out there who are like, nope, like who's the, you know, third century emperor of China? And you're like, what? Regurgitating facts. No, no, exactly. I was like, I mean, I, I got to give props to like Davis's history department. You guys don't do that. Yeah. When I went in, like even, even when it was like, you know, you got old timers in there and that was not their thing. Uh, mm-hmm. So I always respected that. But I don't know, man. Like it would be interesting to see what we could replace that with. And like how I got ideas on how I'd restructure curriculum, but I don't have the money to push those through. So. <laughs> and that's again the issue, right? Funding, 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 funding. Well, you got any last we thoughts? Can... We can call it a night. Uh, I mean, we covered a lot. And I I want to thank you for bringing me on. It's really fun. I had, a, I had a great time discussing this. It's nice to bounce ideas off and things like that because all of these things are swimming in my mind with all the current events that are happening. So it's nice to actually have a dialogue. And that's what needs to happen, right? Yeah, you need to have more of a dialogue. Always, and I, and I so I'm going to put this disclaimer here because I think it's very important for both of our futures as educators. Uh, <laughs> the views in this video, whether I put it up on YouTube or the podcast, I don't know, I'm trying to do both, but I got to figure that out. The views do not reflect. Video, yeah, do not reflect <laughs> the views of either Oak Grove School District and Davis Intermediate School or Barry Union School District. And Absolutely. School, unless 
whoever hears them likes them, and then yeah, okay. <laughs> but, uh, they do not reflect. Do not hold them culpable for anything. If you have any <laughs> questions or concerns, don't even email Sam. <laughs> just email me and just be like, why, why did you put this crap on YouTube? <laughs> And I would respond with probably nothing. I didn't. I, I don't get many responses on these. But um, <laughs> no, man. Thank you. Seriously, it's nice to actually like just talk a bunch of I stuff. Agree. We went all. We went way out of our probably areas of expertise. Yeah, but it's nice to vent, like you said, and talk about it. Exactly, man. I hope you're doing good. Are you? Uh, Likewise. I'm gonna stop recording. Okay, so this is the end of the recording part.